We're going headfirst into week 10 of college football, but before we do, we're resetting the Heisman race. We have a new number one atop our board, so we're gonna count them down starting at number 10. This is our update for the Heisman after week nine of college football presented by our friends at Eckridge. This is a list that starts out west Utah running back Zach Moss, if you haven't been able to watch him, flip on the TV when you see the Utes on. Zach Moss is averaging a missed tackle forced on 45% of his carries. That is the highest rate we've ever seen from a college running back. The previous record is just at 33%, so if he keeps this up, he will etch his name into the record books. He is truly what makes their offense go for Utah. Banged up a little bit with injuries, but if he stays healthy through the rest of the year, expect him to stay on this list and even potentially rise. Number nine on the list, Justin Jefferson of the trio of receivers at LSU. Jefferson is the top dog. They missed Terrace Marshall to get him back on the field. And with Terrace Marshall on the field, Justin Jefferson is freed up in single coverage more often now. He has made 31 receiving conversions. Those are first downs and touchdowns. Only one drop, and he's caught every contested target thrown his way 100%. That leads the country. Obviously can't do any better than that. Jefferson has been the go-to and number one receiver for Joe Burrow, who... We will see later on the list. Number eight, though, also one of three Buckeyes teasing you there. J.K. Dobbins, the running back. This guy is averaging 7.2 yards per carry. He is gaining a first down or a touchdown on 35% of his carries. They know he's coming. They just can't stop him. Dobbins fields. They are an electric offense, but this guy is churning out the yards at a high pace and a high clip for the Buckeyes on the ground. Number seven, Justin Herbert. Maybe not thought of as such a Heisman candidate after week one when they lose to Auburn, but Herbert has done nothing but impress lately. He has led multiple game-winning drives in the fourth quarter for them as they have not lost since week one. He has a 21 touchdown to one interception ratio, 16 of our big time throws. He's ranking up there in most all of our categories, including overall grade, passing grade, you name it, the Pac-12's cream of the crop so far and worthy of his Heisman spot on our list. Number Six as well. He takes a bit of a tumble, as you expect, losing to Kansas State. But Jalen Hurts has still been remarkable running the Lincoln Riley offense for the Sooners. He leads the country in passer rating from a clean pocket at 151.6. He's completing 81.3% of his passes from a clean pocket. Also first, this guy does it and does it well. Everything that he does, it's on the ground with his legs, through the air. The, tumble, the stumble may hurt him, but he's got a couple of big 12 games that he can probably put up some big numbers and get his name back into the contention here in the top two, top three perhaps, but he is likely still going to New York, rightfully so. Getting into the number five spot, we'll stay in the big 12, Chuba Hubbard. Anytime you have a 273 yard advantage over the next closest in terms of total rushing yards this season, this guy is on pace to potentially still break some records on the ground. He has 116 more yards after contact than anybody else in the country. He's forced 52 missed tackles and a, you know, in front of him is some subpar run blocking. He's doing a lot of it on his own. Thus, he's one of the highest greater running backs and obviously those yards are coming mainly on his shoulders on his back. So getting to number four as well, this guy takes a, takes a week off to rehab the injury. They get the bye week in week 10. We'll get to see two attack of Iloa, number four on our list against Joe Burrow when Alabama and LSU square off in week 11. It's kind of a Heisman eliminator, but right now Tua is the best from a clean pocket in terms of overall grade, 126 of 159 from a clean pocket. This guy is throwing 23 touchdowns and no interceptions, a very sharp mark because he's got great pass blocking in front of him. So anytime you're not throwing a pick and throwing multiple touchdowns, it's good and going to bode well for you. Tua getting healthy, and he's back for week 11, most likely here against Joe Burrow. We'll see in a moment. The other quarterback on our list to crack the top three here, Justin Fields from Ohio State. This guy is the highest graded quarterback when targeting the intermediate range of the field. That is 10 to 19 yards past the line of scrimmage. He literally has done everything that has been asked of him in this Ryan Day-led offense. 154.4 passer rating on those intermediate targets. 36 of 48, 10 touchdowns, no interceptions on those 585 yards. He is a downfield thrower, and if he was a dual threat or just a rushing quarterback, he has shed that label, and this guy is doing everything and doing everything, particularly at an elite level right now. Fields and the Buckeyes are rolling. A new number one cracks the list as we slide Joe Burrow down to number two. Still the highest graded quarterback overall, the highest graded quarterback when you average it out to passes targeted at least 10 yards down the field. 74 
of 103, 20 of our big time throws, leading the country in just about every statistic that we have when you filter it to 10 or more yards down the field. Joe Burrow is elite. Joe Burrow is the best quarterback in the country. It's no discredit to him to have him slide. We'll get to number one in a moment, but Burrow is still arguably the nation's leader for the Heisman, but our guy ahead of him is just doing a little bit more and a little bit more in terms of the overall grade. But Burrow is still the best quarterback and the best player at the most important position in all of team sports. But have to side with Chase Young after a dominant performance against arguably the most NFL-ready offensive line that he will see in the Wisconsin Badgers. Just dismantles him. Four sacks. Comes up with the highest single game grade for a pass rusher we've ever given in our years of grading college football. But that's just a microcosm of how dominant he's been this season. Winning 31.5% of his pass rushing snaps. Also a PFF record by a long shot. No one comes close. He has six of the top 10 graded games all year long among edge defenders. And those also rank among the top game grades of our entire time of grading college football. This guy is truly at another level and maybe even better at this stage than either of the Bosa brothers were ahead of him. If there is a defensive player that is worthy of the Heisman, since Charles Woodson, Chase Young is no doubt that guy deserves his name not only as the best player in college football, but at the award show and give him the Heisman after his performance in against Wisconsin. But there it is. New leader at the top, Chase Young. A lot more on PFF.com about all of our Heisman favorites, so check it out over there, as well as our wide receiver core rankings, ranking all 130 through nine weeks of action. And again, this is all presented to you by our friends over at Eckridge. Be sure to sign up for your chance to throw for a million dollars at the national championship game by going to EckridgeFootball.com. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.